Hello there, welcome to a quick flick of experiments with your computer. Now this is an Usborne computer book from the 1980s. Usborne have recently released all their 1980s uh, programming and basic books for free download. I'll put the link below so you can access that. And the Usborne books were something which I cherished from my childhood. I loved all the Usborne books, all the pictures inside them. Uh, like the detective guides, the ghost guide, or the supernatural guide, and a lot of these computer books. And to have them on free download is amazing. I've got a lot in hard copy, but it's just nice to have them in this form as well. Now this is Experiments with Your Computer. Uh, not sure when this would have come out. Maybe 1984, possibly 1985. And it will have... Lots of programs and things to do with your micros, including leaves and kites and you get these little robot guys who walk around with spoons and things and help you. So in the contents we have about this book, computer, no let's skip the contents. This book contains lots of fun programs which enable you, enable you to use your computer to do experiments, I'm so excited I can't speak, and analyse information. The programs are simple examples of how scientists, economists and other researchers use computers. And the idea of these books is, look at that, look, 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 just connect something up to your BBC Micro temperature sensor. This is the sort of thing that Raspberry Pi tried to bring back and the BBC computer project with those little card computers like the Raspberry Pi. Just this tinkering and messing around with computers that we used to do. I don't think I ever connected a temperature sensor up to my micro, but I would have given it a damn good try. Uh, as well as that you learn about things like what computers were used for brain research. We've got electrodes hooked directly into this guy's brain, perhaps. Uh, designing a rocket, solving crimes. You see, I would have loved this. Many types of research produce huge amounts of information. Programs called databases enable researchers to store the information in a computer. A computer can search through a database in seconds. We've got like a photo fit there. Wow. Uh, using programs in this book. Before using the programs in this book, read these hints on typing them in and running them. So some program lines need to be changed for different computers. Yeah, so these books had to cover a wide variety of platforms because that is what it was like back then. We had BBC Basic and Sinclair Basic and Commodore Basic. Okay, so what have we got? We've got a coin tossing program. So you get the basic which allows you to toss coins at a click of a finger, or pair of fingers, you can't really click one finger. More about computer models, although this is a very simple computer program, it shows how a computer model can save time, money, doing real experiments. Yes, although if you just want to toss coins, it's quite a hefty layout for a computer to save money. Quite a large repayment period on that one, I think, and she's looking very nervous about this. I imagine she's sweating because she's dropped so many coins on the floor. We've got a bouncing ball program. It's always good to test the restitutional qualities of a ball. And you can see how far it would bounce on mercury. Pulse rates ex experiments. Can you actually do a graph? That would be an amazing program. It, does it actually make a graph? After you've taken 10 pulse readings, the computer displays a graph. So you take your own pulse, enter it into this program after you've typed it in, and then it'll graph it out. That's incredible. Here it tells you ways to take your pulse. I think these little drawings in the Asborn books just... I love them. Look, they're kind of cartoony, but compelling. Not like... I mean, they are childlike, but not like childish. I mean, I guess they probably are, but anyway, I still found them amazing. We've got Ethel's journey here. Ethel has just moved house and wants to find out whether it is better to go to work by train or bus. The program opposite can help her. It models the journeys by bus and train over and over again. So in your face, Google Maps. She can see which is better over a period of six months or a year. Models like this are used for operational research. I'm not sure why that's in quotes. That is finding out how most efficient ways to, to do things. For instance, how should a self-service restaurant be organised so people do not have to queue for a long time? I thought Asborn books were more of a UK thing, but we've clearly got um, 
American spellings in here. I presume you had Usborne in America as well. It's something I've never really considered. Here's the program on red paper. And then when you use the program, you when you run the program, you need to type in the information about two routes as shown on the right. The information for Ethel's routes is given in the picture on page 14. Page 14. So what, you have to work this out? The, t to walk, the walk to the station takes 13 minutes. So you, you can put all this information in here. Time between buses and then it will work out the times for you. Uh, yeah, quite a convoluted program, but nice nonetheless. About economic models, more about modelling. Oh, I remember doing about modelling in IT GCSE. Let's like move on this. We've got e about economic models. That's better, isn't it? I should have zoomed in like that to start with. Running an airline. This program uses... Let's just get rid of that menu up there. Go away. This program uses a make-believe currency called Groats. About the program, running the program. Here we go, we've got about experiments with sensors. We've got a, uh, the sensors will only work with computers which have an analog port. That is the Commodore 64, VIC-20, TRS-80 and BBC. So Spectrum owners, you are bang out of luck, I'm afraid. How do we do that? Things you'll need. We need a Commodore 64 and VIC-20 nine-way female socket. I imagine you could have got an adapter for the Spectrum to do this. This is a the joystick port, isn't it? BBC, AD, plug. Wow, this is quite a complicated experiment, but I mean, this is just so much learning goes into this. We've got some resistors here. Making the sensor. Oh, that would have been so much fun, like tying it all together. And then you make the program. So we'd have to look at the analog ports. Interesting. These lines are for Commodore 64 only. See pages 42 to 45 for the conversions. So this is the Fermista program. Type your value here. It's quite... I mean, wait, that's, that's interesting, isn't it? So it's, it's referencing... Where is it referencing the, the actual device? You can find out which port to use. On this page there is a test to check that the Fermista is working. First switch off computer. Go sir, print R equals R, return. So this is this is peaking, this is peaking the port uh, the, which the thermistor is plugged into. Ooh. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Fascinating things. We've got soldering hints. Oh, this is what my kid should be doing. Just soldering the stuff together rather than playing Minecraft. Light sensor program. This is one thing I always want to do. Look at this shifty bastard here. If you point the sensor at the window, the graph will show when someone walks past because they'll block out the light for the moment. For a moment, it's um, it's like sensing uh, exoplanets, isn't it? When they move in front of the stars and block the light out. What do you need to make a light? Okay, so you need a uh, LDR to pick up. The light, you need to put it into a tube to make it dark, and then you hook it up to, yeah, the same ports. Wow. Wow, wow. And here's a database to store types of rock. Using the database, databases to make, if you're interested in plants or fungi, you could make a database showing their common names. Here's the database program. I mean, it is worth, it's probably worth picking up an old computer. And grabbing these books, you could just have hours of fun just doing that, couldn't you? Grab, get yourself an old computer online, go through these books, and just play around with it. Why not? You could get a Raspberry Pi, but I think it, it pays to go back to more basic systems, more things which are closer to the hardware. And then you get a, a better understanding for what is going on. I mean, the Pi has to work on an operating system, uh, I mean, all computers work on an operating system easier, obviously, but these were just closer to the metal. 
And if you've got kids, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through these with my kids. I'm gonna get them to learn how to program like we used to. There we go. Anyway, this this is the experiments with your computer Usborne book. Just a quick look through. Two pounds twenty-five. What an absolute bargain. Also, I'd like to note that I once won a Usborne duck in Waterstone's bookshop because I managed to spot all the ducks in the shop. That was a terribly exciting day. One of the only things I've ever won. <laughs> hey! Anyway, thanks for watching this quick flick. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye!